My name is Sarah, and I'm 58 years old. I want to share a difficult situation involving my daughter-in-law, who doesn't like me. You might assume I've done something to upset her, but that's not true. I think if you hear the whole story, you'll understand why she feels this way. To give you some background, I have one son, Harry, who just turned 36 last month. He's the light of my life and has always been a wonderful son. His father passed away when Harry was very young. I'll never forget that day. Harry was only three years old, and we were home together when there was a knock at the door. It was the police. They informed me that my husband had been in a fatal accident. My world crumbled in an instant. At that time, I was a stay-at-home mom with no income, and we didn't have much savings or life insurance. My husband had a good job, and we had planned that I would stay home to take care of Harry, so we hadn't felt the need to secure those kinds of things. But suddenly, I was left with almost nothing and had to take care of a little boy, all while being devastated by the loss of my husband. The small amount of money I had was quickly eaten up by medical bills, and I found myself in a desperate situation. I had to ask my husband's family for financial help to cover his funeral expenses, but they didn't offer much support. Despite Harry being their own blood, they told me we weren't their problem. This broke my heart even more. My own family had disowned me when I married my husband, so I couldn't turn to them for help either. In the middle of my grief, I didn't have the luxury of time to process my emotions. I had to focus on surviving and providing for Harry. We moved into a small apartment, and I started working two minimum wage jobs to make ends meet. Fortunately, I had some incredibly kind neighbors, Cammie and her husband Jack, who helped me during those difficult times. They assisted me with moving and would even babysit Harry while I worked long hours. As time went on, things started to get better. I eventually found a job that paid well and came with good benefits, including health insurance. This allowed me to go to therapy and also get Harry the support he needed. We moved to a better neighborhood and Harry was able to attend a good school. I no longer had to rely on Cammie for babysitting, but I remained grateful to her and Jack for everything they had done for us. Cammie and Jack had become like family to me, and I wanted to repay them for their kindness. Once I was in a better financial position, I tried to pay them for all the help they'd given me, but Cammie refused, saying, Sarah, you're like a sister to us. We can't take your money. Harry is like our nephew. You and Harry are family to us. I still felt guilty, though. I didn't want to feel like I had taken advantage of their generosity. I continued to insist on repaying them, so eventually, I offered to help in other ways. I told Cammy, at least let me look after your dogs when you go on vacation. And when your daughter is born, I'd love to be your primary babysitter. Please let me do this to give back. When their daughter, Sheila, was born, I was so happy to be able to babysit her whenever they needed it. Over time, Harry and Sheila grew up together and became very close friends. As they got older, it became clear that Harry and Sheila had feelings for each other. By the time they both graduated from college, they were in a serious, committed relationship. I was happy for them, though I started to notice some tension. Despite my close friendship with Cammy and Jack, Sheila didn't seem to like me very much. I didn't understand why, especially since I had been like a second mother to her growing up, but she often acted cold or critical toward me. Sheila would complain about things like my household rules, saying I was too strict with Harry. I only had basic expectations, like not wasting food and cleaning up after yourself, but she seemed to find fault with everything. She also had very different views on money and lifestyle. I've always been frugal and made it a point to donate to women's shelters, knowing how hard life can be for those in need. Sheila, on the other hand, valued luxury and material things. She once told me, You can barely take care of yourself and Harry. Why do you waste money on charity when you could be buying him nicer things? That really stung, but I calmly explained, Harry already has everything he needs, and I believe in helping others. My donations may be small, but they make a difference to the shelter. Harry understood this and never complained about our lifestyle. I raised him to appreciate what we had, even when times were tough. 
But Sheila couldn't seem to grasp that perspective. Cammy and Jack tried to talk to Sheila about her behavior toward me, but nothing seemed to change. She continued to criticize my parenting, my finances, and even my relationship with Harry whenever she had the chance, especially when Harry wasn't around to hear it. When Harry proposed to Sheila after they graduated, I was happy for him, though I had my doubts about whether Sheila was the right match for him. Still, I supported them. Harry had a good job by then, so money wasn't an issue for him. But when they started planning the wedding, things got tense again. Sheila kept comparing me to her parents, who were financially contributing to the wedding. She made remarks like, Wouldn't it be nice if both of our parents could help? Harry is already spending so much. We would have to settle for a backyard wedding if it depended on you. I was hurt, but I explained to her, I'm sorry, Sheila. I've tried to save up, but I can't afford much. I suggested cutting costs in small ways, like opting for a smaller cake. But Sheila dismissed my ideas, saying, My friends and I have class. I can't have a cheap wedding. Harry promised me the wedding of my dreams, and I'm not changing it just because you can't pay. I felt terrible for not being able to contribute more, but I wanted to help in any way I could. I ended up selling my old engagement ring, something that was very precious to me, and gave the money to Harry as a down payment for the house they were looking to buy. I told him, This is your wedding gift from me. I want you to use this for your future home. At first, Harry didn't want to accept the money, but I insisted, and eventually, he used it to help purchase their house. What Sheila didn't know was that I had contributed to the down payment, as Harry kept the house in his name. Sheila, who didn't have a job, was thrilled to become a stay-at-home wife. But her happiness didn't last long. A few months after their wedding, I was in a bad accident and needed a long recovery. Harry, who was now financially secure, covered my medical bills and asked me to move into their home so he could take better care of me. I felt terrible about the idea of burdening him, but I had no other option at the time. Sheila, of course, wasn't thrilled about me moving in. After Harry's wedding to Sheila, I knew it might be difficult for Sheila to adjust to having me around, especially since Harry invited me to move in with them. I had recently suffered a terrible accident that left me needing a long recovery period, and Harry insisted that I come live with him so he could take care of me. I was hesitant at first because I didn't want to impose on a new marriage or be a burden. I told Harry, I don't want to intrude, especially so soon after your wedding. But Harry was adamant. Mom, the house is big enough for all of us. Sheila will understand, I'm sure of it. Besides, Cammy and Jack also stay with us from time to time, and you're no different from them. You've sacrificed so much for me, and now it's my turn to look after you. Still, I wasn't convinced. Harry, I think you should discuss this with Sheila first. If she isn't comfortable with me living here, I won't stay. I understand if she doesn't want to take care of me. I don't want to cause any tension between the two of you. Harry reassured me. You don't have to worry, Mom. Sheila won't have to look after you. I'm hiring a professional caregiver to assist you. You won't be a burden. Please, just let me do this for you. Harry was so sincere and persistent that I eventually agreed to move in, though I still had my concerns. When I arrived, Sheila greeted me with a smile and said she was happy to have me there. But her behavior changed dramatically when Harry wasn't around. When it was just the two of us, Sheila showed her true feelings. She was furious. She told me in no uncertain terms that I wasn't welcome in her home and that she would kick me out after just a few days. She was clearly just pretending to be nice in front of Harry. One evening, while Harry was working late, Sheila invited her friends over for a party. I was in my bedroom resting, but I could hear them talking loudly in the living room. Sheila deliberately made sure her comments were loud enough for me to hear. She said things like, I'm so glad you all love the house. It's exactly what I dreamed of, and Harry is paying for everything, both the wedding and the house. It's a shame his horrible mother didn't plan better for him. One of her friends chimed in. It's so sad Harry had such a bad parent. His mom is practically a peasant. I don't know why Harry thinks so highly of her. She couldn't even help with the wedding. I mean, 
She suggested getting a smaller cake, as if her peasant money could even buy a Costco cake. Another friend asked, Why is she even living with you? Doesn't she have her own life? Sheila responded, Oh, she quit her job and now lives off Harry's money. She keeps going on about how her accident damaged her body, and now Harry has to pay for everything. But don't worry, it's only temporary. Once the wedding is over, I'll make up some lies and kick her out. I have the perfect plan. Hearing them say such cruel things about me felt like a stab to the heart. Sheila had not only insulted me, but also turned me into a laughingstock in front of her friends. I was so hurt that I began sobbing quietly in my room. It was then that I decided Harry needed to know the truth about how Sheila was treating me. Since they were speaking so loudly, I recorded their conversation on my phone. When Harry got home later that night, Sheila was back to her usual sweet self, trying to impress him. After dinner, I called Harry into my room and played the recording for him. I watched as his face changed from confusion to pure anger. He stormed out of the room and called Sheila over. Sheila, what the hell is this? He demanded. You need to apologize to my mother right now. How could you be so cruel? I can't believe you would say such vile things behind her back. Sheila immediately began backpedaling, saying, Harry, please listen to me. I didn't mean any of it. I stopped her. Sheila, you don't need to apologize. I only showed Harry the recording so he would know the truth about how you've been treating me. I've decided that I'm going to move out next month. I don't want to cause any more trouble, and I need some time to myself. Harry was furious, but he understood that I needed time. Later that night, Harry called Cammie and Jack over, and together with Sheila, we all sat down to discuss what had happened. Harry played the recording in front of everyone, and Sheila was forced to confess her cruel words. Cammie and Jack were shocked and deeply disappointed. Sheila, what is this we're hearing? Cammie asked, her voice filled with disbelief. Is this how we raised you? You know how much Ava struggled to raise Harry. She even took care of you and treated you like her own daughter. How could you talk about her like that? Sheila tried to defend herself, but Cammy continued, I'm ashamed to call you my daughter after hearing what you've done. I interjected, Cammy, Jack, please don't blame yourselves. You did nothing wrong. Sheila is an adult and can make her own choices. You don't need to apologize for her behavior. But Jack shook his head. We're so sorry, Ava. We don't know where we went wrong with her. You're not a burden to Harry, and you never will be. Harry stood up and faced Sheila, his face still red with anger. Sheila, you should be ashamed of yourself. You don't work, yet you speak this way about my mother? She sold her engagement ring to help us with a down payment for this house, and you treat her like this? I can't believe I ever thought of marrying you. Sheila was in tears now, pleading with Harry. I'm so sorry, Harry. I was being stupid. I didn't mean what I said. Please forgive me. It'll never happen again. But Harry wasn't having any of it. An apology isn't enough, Sheila. I'm calling off the wedding. You need to move out and find a job. I can't marry someone who treats my mother like this. Sheila was devastated. No, Harry, please don't do this. I'll do anything, just don't cancel the wedding. Cammie agreed with Harry. Sheila, this is for the best. You've been coddled for too long. It's time you learn how to support yourself. We won't be helping you financially anymore, and all your memberships are canceled. You need to grow up and learn the value of hard work. Sheila was crying uncontrollably at this point. But I've never had a job before. What am I supposed to do? No one will hire me. I might have to work at a place like Walmart or a restaurant. Harry's voice was cold as he responded. Good. Maybe that's how you'll learn what it's like to be financially independent. My mother worked those kinds of jobs to support me, and if she can do it, so can you. You need to understand the importance of money and learn empathy for others. He looked around the room, his eyes filled with determination. Chilla, you can't stay here. My mother sacrificed so much for me. She sold her engagement ring to help us buy this house. If anyone has the right to live here, it's her. 
Sheila begged and apologized over and over again, but the damage was done. Harry, Cammy, and Jack stood firm, and Sheila was forced to pack her things and leave. After Harry made the decision to cancel the wedding and end his relationship with Sheila, she moved out the very next day and went to live with her parents. At first, it seemed like the situation might calm down, but Sheila started harassing Harry constantly. She would call him repeatedly throughout the day, begging for his attention and asking him to reconsider. It got so bad that Harry had to block her number, but even then, she found ways to continue contacting him. She started calling from her friend's phones, trying to manipulate him into talking to her. One day, Sheila showed up at Harry's house unannounced. She looked a complete mess. Her eyes were red from crying, and she seemed desperate. With tears streaming down her face, she pleaded with him, saying, Harry, I really need you right now. My parents are threatening to kick me out if I don't get a job. They've already cut me off financially, and they won't even pay my phone bill anymore. Please, take me back. I'm struggling so much without you. But Harry wasn't moved by her tears or her pleas. His face remained stern as he said, You deserve everything that's happening to you, Sheila. All these years, I thought you were a good person, but you've shown your true colors. You're selfish and cruel. Sheila sobbed even harder and tried to justify herself. Don't say that, Harry. I love you so much. You don't understand what I'm going through. My friends won't even hang out with me anymore because I have no money. I can't find a good job because I have no experience. How am I supposed to live like this? Harry's patience was wearing thin. Do you think you're special, Sheila? My mother worked minimum wage jobs to support me, and she managed just fine. She didn't have any help, yet she fed and cared for both of us. You only have yourself to take care of, and you're acting like you're the only person in the world facing challenges. Sheila became even more agitated and lashed out. Your mother is the reason I'm in this situation. If it weren't for her, none of this would have happened. She ruined everything. I had been nearby, listening to their conversation, and I couldn't stay silent any longer. I stepped forward and confronted Sheila. Why do you keep blaming me for your own choices? I should have kicked you out of this house the moment I realized how cruel you were. But instead, I gave you a chance. Clearly, you've learned nothing from all of this. Harry added, Sheila, you need to leave right now. If you show up here again, I'll call the police. You're not welcome in this house anymore. Realizing that she wasn't getting anywhere with her manipulations, Sheila began to panic. She started shouting, becoming more and more hysterical. Before she could cause any more trouble, Harry firmly told her, Leave now, Sheila. I'm serious. If you don't go, I will call the police. Defeated, Sheila finally left, but not before throwing me a hateful glare. I knew this wasn't the last we would see of her. After she left, I decided to call Cammie and Jack, Sheila's parents, to let them know what had happened. I explained the situation and warned them that we might have to call the police on their daughter if she continued harassing us. Cammie was deeply apologetic. She thanked me for telling her, and although she seemed upset, she cut the call short. After that, I didn't hear from her for about a month. During that time, Harry was heartbroken. He spent most of his time at work, trying to distract himself, or he stayed at home taking care of me. It was clear he was still processing everything that had happened with Sheila, but he told me on several occasions, I'm just glad I saw her true face before marrying her. A month later, I finally heard back from Cammie. I had been worried that she was angry with me, so I hadn't reached out during that time. But when Cammie called, she explained, I'm sorry for not being in touch. Ava, so much has happened over the past month, and we've all been overwhelmed. I wanted to give you space to figure out if you still wanted to stay in contact. I was surprised and reassured her. Cammie, all this time I thought you were mad at me. We're like sisters. I would never cut you off, especially over something that wasn't even your fault. Cammie sighed and said, I could never be mad at you, Ava. It's because of my stupid daughter that all of this happened. I can't believe I raised such a vile person. 
I know you tried your best to help her, but unfortunately, she has fallen in with some really bad friends who have influenced her thinking. She's so stubborn, she refuses to change her ways. We talked for hours, catching up on everything that had happened. Cammy revealed that they had finally kicked Sheila out of their house. We gave her a month to find a place to live and move out, Cammy explained. It was time for her to face the real world. She's working at McDonald's now, but she hates it. She's sharing a cheap apartment with three other girls, but her friends dropped her as soon as she ran out of money. Curious, I asked. Has her attitude improved at all? Cammy sighed heavily. Unfortunately, no. She's still crying about Harry and blaming you for ruining her life. We've tried to explain to her that it's all her fault, but she refuses to take responsibility. She still thinks she's too good to work, but now that reality has hit, she's learning how hard life can be. Jack, and I have even offered to pay for therapy, but if she doesn't improve, we may have to go low contact with her. Despite everything, Cammy and I made peace with the situation. She was sad that Harry would never be her son-in-law, but she understood that it was for the best. Both she and Jack assured me that they would always consider Harry as part of their family, no matter what. I was glad that we could maintain a relationship, even after everything that had happened. However, things took a turn for the worse a few months later. Sheila showed up at our house again, but this time, she didn't just come to talk. She had a full-blown meltdown. She vandalized my car which was parked in the driveway, and even tried to break down the front door when I told her I was calling the police. Thankfully, our security cameras caught everything on tape. When the police arrived, they warned Sheila to leave and told her not to return. After this incident, Harry and I decided to file for restraining orders against her. Although I chose not to press charges, it didn't seem worth it anymore. Harry was determined to protect us both from her escalating behavior. To ease my mind, Harry decided to buy me a new car so I wouldn't have to worry about transportation. I'm still living with my son, and things have settled down for the most part. Cammie and Jack continue to visit from time to time, though they've significantly distanced themselves from Sheila. They're still mortified by her actions and rarely answer her calls anymore. I feel bad for them sometimes because they were good parents who deserve better than what Sheila has become. In the end, this was a tough lesson for Sheila, but it also taught me how much my son truly loves me. Harry is now dating a new woman who seems like a perfect match for him. It's still early days, but I have a good feeling about her, and I hope she eventually becomes my daughter-in-law.